Hi, this is David. Today we're going to talk about the Azure Storage Explorer. This is a tool from Microsoft that allows you to work with the assets inside of your Azure Storage account. Now, I've already created an Azure Storage account here. Uh, if you want to know how to do this, there, I have another video on that. Go back and watch that. But here it is. It's called DG Test Store. DG is short for me, test because it's a test, and store is short for storage. Uh, and you can see that there's uh, blobs and files and tables and queues, or potentially there are. I actually haven't added anything to this. I just created this a few minutes ago. Uh, some of the stuff you can do inside of the portal is pretty powerful, but there are things that are it's difficult to do. Like, for example, manipulating data inside of a table is hard to do inside of this browser. Um, however, this tool, this rich client tool, that storage export is available to you. And here on the overview page, I have a button at the top that says Open and Explorer. And if you don't have it installed, just click this link right here. And it takes you to this right here. It's a part of uh, the Azure site. And you can download this tool. It's 100% free. It's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's a very quick install. Um, I've already done that, so I'm not going to do that. What I can do is click on Open and Explore, and then just Open Azure Storage Explorer. Click on that here, or I can go to my Start menu and launch it that way as well. But if I click on that and say, yes, I want to switch apps to here, then it launches the Explorer if it's not already open, and it brings me right to that particular storage account. And I can see in here that I don't have any blob containers or file shares or queues. The only tables right here are the ones that are created internally just for Azure to manage itself. But I can come in here and I can do things like I can create a table. I'll call it presentations right there. And there it is. And if I want to, I can add rows to that table. I can give it a partition key and a row key and other properties as well. Foo, which is a string. And bar, which is, let's say that's a, uh, a double, and so on. So there's my one row in here. And in table storage, not every row has to have the same schema. It does have to have a partition key and a unique row key. That is important, but I can add other things as well to this. All right. Um, uh, I can also import from here. So for example, I have this CSV file, and if you look at it, you can see it's just a common separated file. And it's maybe not obvious from this, but it's actually a list of public presentations that I've done over the years. I click on open right here, and it, it knows this table actually has a bunch of header information. So it knows that there's a, a city column, and a country column, an event name, an ID, presentation, all that thing, all those things in here. It guesses at the type, and it shows me row one, the first row of it. And so I can manipulate this, I can change things if I want to, or I can click on insert, and it'll actually bring in all the rows of that right there. And there were about 500 rows in that. <clears throat> you can see right here, 498 cached items. So the 497 in that, in that import table, plus this one up at the top uh, somewhere in here. Well, it's not at the top anymore, but there is one right here. Um, if I want to edit one of these things, let's say that I come in here and I want to edit this row right here and say, you know, that wasn't at Champaign, Illinois. That was actually in uh, Bloomington, Illinois. And it was at, um, I think, Illinois State University is in Bloomington. I could be wrong. Like this. I can make changes right here. Um, I can uh, look at statistics about my table right here. Generate them here. Um, I can uh, refresh the table if there's some external way that's adding it. Um, over here under column options. Um, this is where I could remove columns or I could um, uh, move columns up and down. Now it's not a drag and drop interface. Uh, that would be nice, but I would like to have these in the same order in which they were in my in my uh, original comma separated file so I could do something like that and say all right so the ID and the presentation and the topic event name a country oh I guess these are in the same order here but let's say I wanted to have the um, event name before the topic click on that and move up right here click OK and it reorders it in the way that it displays it right here 
<clears throat> if for some reason I want to get export this out, I can export it as a comma separated file here um, and give it a name like uh, let's do that right there. And then when I go up to my downloads folder, whoops, not that one, my downloads folder, right here, there it is right here, and I will open that with Notepad++, and I can see it's created a comma separate file right there. And finally, if I want to delete some data, I can highlight this row and click delete. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. That's why I can select it. And in fact, I can use the control key to select, to multi-select it like that. I can use the shift key to select everything between two and delete those. All sorts of things that I could do like this. In fact, if I want to do this, I could say select all, either all on this one page. It looks like there's about, uh, I don't know, about 20 some on that page. Or I could say select everything that's in here, all 488 items, and then delete them to delete the entire table. And now this table is completely empty. And I get a log of everything that I've done right here, which I can say clear the completed or clear the successful one. So in this video, I've shown you how to work with tables inside the Azure Storage Explorer. There are other capabilities I'll show in later videos, working with files, blobs, and queues. But for now, this is David. Thank you for watching.